And Tishuk, I welcome the fact that you have moved from asserting that the declaration of a climate emergency was merely symbolic and that you have moved from that position and that a climate action plan has now been published by your colleague, Minister Bruton. Um, the plan clearly needs further discussion given the vagueness of a number of areas, not least of which are agriculture and transport, and equally important, further discussion is necessary on what actions are necessary to ensure that Ireland 2040 and the 10-year implementation plan are climate-proofed against that plan. In that context, I am once again appealing to you to look at Galway, a beautiful bilingual city which is ostensibly thriving on so many levels, but whose success and development belies the reality of many people on the ground. Indeed, and unfortunately, the growth of the city is taking place in the absence of a city architect and a master plan that puts the common good to the fore. The growth is also premised on the private market providing accommodation units, as they are called, and the rollout of more traffic with more, more roads with more traffic congestion. This is developer-led development which got the city and the country into the situation in the first place and most regrettably we find ourselves in Galway back in that position and I should point out to you that your colleague Deputy Coveney agreed with me on two occasions on the public record that Galway was experiencing developer-led development. And this is notwithstanding the repeated use of the word sustainable development in the national planning framework, in the plan and the spirit of the recently published climate action plan. Government policy has now led to the situation where we house our homeless in tourist accommodation in hotels and B&B and we house our tourists in homes under Airbnb. Taoiseach, I'm most reluctant to use individuals, but let me just quickly tell you that I made representations on behalf of a person this week, three young children, 11 years on a waiting list, during that period of time never been offered her house. The only advice given to her was to go to the HAP placement finder officer or language to that effect, which she did do, but there are no premises available in Galway. Simon have repeatedly told us and given us reports which tells us they're locked out of the market. That's, oh, she is one, or that person is one of 4,000 households on a waiting list. And so I'm saying that government policy is actually worsening the crisis with HAP, which is the only game in town. Parallel with that, last night at City Council level, the National Development Agency presented a feasibility study on the Dyke Road in Galway, four acres. And it's quite clear from what I've looked at that the government, through the Land Development Agency, have absolutely no interest in using public lands for the, for the benefit of the maximum number of people for the common good. I want to conclude by saying these problems are not inevitable. The housing crisis in Galway has been created. The traffic congestion has been created. If we're seriously interested in this stall, in making our words mean something and the Climate Action Plan, then you need to look at Galway. We need a commitment for a master plan that puts the common good to the fore. Included in that, we need a recognition that the city you, has to, is going to grow by 50% and we need a feasibility study for light rail as a matter of urgency. Garamad. Thank you, Deputy Fischer. Um, thanks very much, Deputy, for your question. I, I, um, uh, I didn't say that the declaration of a climate emergency by this house was was merely symbolic. I think, I think you put the merely in yourself. So I guess that was merely disingenuous. Um, I said it was symbolic, uh, but that symbols and gestures do matter, uh, but had to be followed up with action. Uh, and the climate action plan, which was pub published last week, uh, outlines uh, and states very clearly what those actions uh, what those actions are. Uh, in relation to Galway, uh, as you'll know, our projects are in 2040. Uh, designates Galway as one of the cities that we want to see grow its population uh, by 50% between now and 40. Um, a city with compact urban growth, most of it happening uh, around the city centre, which makes sense for transport reasons and makes sense for reasons of, um, uh, of climate action as, as well, uh, moving away from the sprawl of the past uh, towards livable, uh, densely populated urban centres. Uh, I'm told that the port company uh, is due to start a public consultation regarding their port lands, and you know that you know those lands very well, and the Inner Harbour in particular, where there's huge potential for new housing, uh, for new employment, and for new amenities uh, right there in the middle uh, of the city centre. And NUI Galway has similar plans in relation to uh, Nuns Island. Um, when it comes to the whole idea of a master plan, uh, I think that's a good idea. 
Um, generally speaking, those things are local authority led. Uh, you'll know that Cork, for example, developed CASP, a uh, Cork Area Strategic Plan. Um, Limerick, I think, has done something similar at Limerick 2030. Uh, government would certainly be happy to cooperate uh, and be part of that, uh, but usually these things uh, are best led uh, from the city or county themselves uh, rather than being imposed uh, by central government. Um, but a master plan, of course, makes sense, uh, and I think, that's a, I think that's a very good suggestion. Uh, just in relation to the, 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 the LDA, uh, the purpose of the LDA is to use publicly owned land and private land, uh, but mainly publicly owned land, to deliver more housing. And that's housing for everyone. Uh, it's social housing for people who are waiting far too long on the housing list, like the uh, family you mentioned. Uh, it's cost rental housing for people who need uh, affordable rents. And it's also private housing as well for people who want to buy a home. Uh, because 70%, more than 70% of Irish people uh, do own their own home. Uh, and home ownership is a good thing. And we shouldn't be embarrassed about using uh, uh, public land uh, to provide people with their first home. Um, and one thing I want to make sure uh, is that people who are now in their 20s and 30s uh, can aspire to buy their own home. Uh, and I don't uh, think it's wrong um, that government policy uh, and public land in some circumstances uh, should be used to enable people uh, to, earn, to own their own home for the first time. Connolly. I, I, welcome, I welcome the fact that you say a master plan is necessary. It is necessary for the government to take a hands-on approach because Galway City Council has not done that. I welcome compact urban growth that's done in a sustainable way and within that um, paradigm we need a feasibility study for light rail. The city is destined to increase its population by more than 50%. In relation to the Land Development Agency, let me tell you what they have in their presentation, Taoiseach, and you might take the trouble to read it. I know you're extremely busy, but let me read it. Residential apartments, no. Why? Build to sell, not viable given the construction cost and end use, end use values. Residential apartments, built to rent, not viable yet. So in what we're going to do, because it's not viable rent yet, because the rents are so astronomically high in Galway, we're going to use that land to build a hotel, to build student accommodation can be rented out at very high rates in the summer, and many other things besides. So what, a plus retention of car parking spaces in a city that needs to be climate proofed. So Taoiseach, again, I'm using my few minutes to appeal to you. Look at Galway. Take it as an example to implement the Climate Action Plan if you're seriously interested. It's Thank crying you, out for a sustainable plan. Light rail, sustainable development in the city. And finally, Cancorla, there is no reason for a, 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 a housing accommodation problem. We have Cant Station, we have the Dyke Road, we have the Harbour, we have a hundred and something acres between the city and the council at the old airport site and much other land and we have a housing crisis because you, each Deputy. one is developing their own plan. Thank you. Tishuk, please. Um, there is uh, a newly elected Galway City Council only in the last month. Uh, new councillors have been elected to that council and perhaps now is the opportunity for them uh, to develop a master plan uh, for the city, uh, one that is climate proofed, uh, one that provides uh, good amenities, uh, one that provides uh, good public transport, uh, one that provides for extra housing of all forms, because we need extra housing uh, of all forms, social, affordable, cost rental, uh, and homes uh, for, people, for, people to, uh, for people to buy. And certainly government uh, is willing and able to engage with the city council on developing a master plan. Um, we have CASP and Cork, we have Limerick 2030, uh, and I'm sure that um, uh, if the City Council wants to approach the Department of Housing, Planning and Local Government about that, uh, they'll receive a very favourable reply.